A new report just out in the Washington Post this morning suggests an overwhelming do-anything-to-win attitude taking over the Trump White House. This is what it says. Slumping in the polls and at war with his political rivals, President Trump has signaled a willingness to act with impunity in his drive for re-election, taking steps over the past week that demonstrate a disregard for legal boundaries meant to hold him accountable and protect the sanctity of American democracy. Let's bring in Tim Naftali, former director of the Nixon Presidential Library and a CNN presidential historian, Anna Palmer, senior Washington correspondent for Politico, and Joe Lockhart, former Clinton White House press secretary. Joe, that's the atmosphere at the White House right now, and it's within that atmosphere that the president, when his own campaign pollsters did a poll which showed him trailing in key states, and then that poll was leaked, what did he do? He fired yeah. some of the pollsters. What does that tell you? Well, it's a, it's a microcosm of the entire Trump administration, which is first the story comes out, he denies it. Uh, then the actual uh, information, actually, he says it's fake. And uh, he doesn't have polls like that, and he describes these polls as terrible things. Then his staff uh, uh, denies it along. And then the, the actual poll leaks, and he continues to deny it, and then he fires the pollsters, and then continues to deny it. The, the, the interesting thing is it's seven, eight days since the first story. We're still talking about it. It's like the worst press management. The, you know, the best answer would be is we don't talk about our internal polls. We're going to win. Uh, but it does um, uh, highlight the fact that for all of his ability to drive a narrative on Twitter every morning, that it's lacking strategy. It's just whatever he feels like that morning. And it's, that's creating a lot of difficulty, I think, for them, uh, for, for the White House. Well, also in terms of what we've heard, too, that, that part of this was also about mollifying Donald Trump, and that this was about basically keeping the president happy because he'd been fuming about it for so many days. And when he doesn't even mean to, he ends up driving the narrative in that fashion mm -hmm. as well, Anna. I think what this shows really is the president's obsession. When he gets bad news he doesn't like and it gets in the public sphere, he has a really hard time turning the corner. This is the White House that was obsessed with leaks uh, internally in the official capacity. Clearly, they're trying to take uh, measures right now to stem the concept of leaks into uh, his presidential campaign. But this is a rough start. Tomorrow, they're going to have the official kickoff of the Trump 2020 campaign. And this is not the thing they want to be talking about. These poll numbers, whether they are a little old or not, they don't look good for the president. Tim, you're nodding. I want to get your take on this before I bring up Nixon. <laughs> Always Nixon. Um, he's a, the president's clearly a, a nightmare if you want to give him bad news. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit later about foreign policy. This is always a, an issue. How do you give this president bad news? And it's clear that he can't handle it, which means, of course, that people in the inner circle, in the campaign, are going to try to shield him from bad news, which is not going to help uh, campaign management at all. All right. Now, in your wheelhouse, Richard Nixon, obviously, a, a Nixon expert. And the president in this interview with George Stephanopoulos was talking about the whole idea of whether or not he wanted you know, Robert Mueller fired during the investigation. And listen how he framed his answer. I wasn't going to fire. You know why? Because I watched Richard Nixon go around firing everybody, and that didn't work out too well. It's true. That is actually acute historical understanding. What I don't believe is that he actually believes that. Um, because if you look at the Mueller report, this president was fulminating all the time about getting rid of, uh, about Mueller, uh, getting rid of Mueller. So I think that, yes, indeed, what starts the engine of impeachment going in 1973 is when Richard Nixon uh, fires Cox and tries to shut down the independent uh, investigation of Watergate. What I don't believe is that the president, uh, in the first months of his uh, uh, administration and even in the second year, actually believed that he didn't have the power to do this and it wasn't a good thing. So maybe now he's saying that, uh, yes, we learned the lesson of history. But again, from volume two of the Mueller report, it is my sense, and most, of the, most people agree, that this president really, really, really wanted to get rid of Mueller. So good that he learned the lesson in time because we would certainly be in impeachment proceedings right now if he had fired Mueller and tried to do what Nixon did with Cox and the independent Watergate uh, group. There was, a, there was a lot that we learned in that interview uh, with George Stephanopoulos and a moment that I know has really stood out to you, John. I think this, this to me is the story of the morning, but, but this was, well, go ahead. Well, oh, I don't want to steal your thunder, but it's the, thank you, thank you, Joe, for setting us up perfectly. There is the cough. So if you're not familiar with it, let us just play that moment for you. 
At some point, I hope they get it, because it's, <laughs> it's a fantastic financial statement. It's a fantastic financial statement. And uh, let's do that over. He's coughing in the middle of my answer. Yeah, OK. I don't like that, you know? I don't when, like your that. chief of staff. If you're going to cough, please yeah, leave the room. Just get a shot of, and I'll, yeah. I'll come over here. Just, just can't, you just can't. Just to change the shot. Okay. Sorry. Okay, do you want to do that a little differently then? Yeah, or? we just changed the angle. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So at some point, so at some point, I look forward to, frankly, I want, I'd like to have people see my financial statement. I mean, there's really, there's two parts to that. There's the cough, I don't like the way this is playing out. I'm going to produce this shot. I'm the television guy. Versus the, why was he coughing? Did he not want the president saying something? I mean, who knows, Joe? Well, I, I think if it was a strategy, he should have coughed a lot more during that interview. <laughs> Perhaps uh, a little bit more loudly, uh, too. Yeah, much more loudly. Listen, it, I think, again, the interview was, was really interesting last night because you saw petulant Donald Trump, uh, who is impossible, I think, to, or is very intimidating to give bad news to because he clearly um, just has no regard for anyone else or at least to the, his staff uh, around him. But you also saw, and I think this is a difference with Nixon. Um, uh, when you listen to Nixon tape, his tapes, he, w he was, I think, pretty honest with himself about what he was doing. I mean, he knew he was covering up a crime, and he was covering it up to protect himself. The effortlessness of Donald Trump lying during his interview with George, almost every answer contained two or three fundamental mistruths to the point where George, had, it seemed like in the middle, kind of gave up correcting him. Because every time we did, it was a five-minute sidebar about, you know, the argument. And it, it's, it's really, it just struck me as kind of a sickness um, that he, and I don't think he, I don't think he believes he's lying. And that's very dangerous when you come to, you know, some of the decisions that are on his plate right now, particularly, you know, the Middle East, where he's going to have to make decisions based on facts, not based on, you know, his famous gut. I don't want to let Coughgate slide this quickly for a no. second here, because it seems to me the president has proven that he won't push you out or sanction you in the White House if you violate the Hatch Act, uh, if you talk to the Russians, if you lie to the press, if you spread, you know, derogatory things about John McCain. But if you cough, if you cough, that'll get you kicked out of the Oval Office. And uh, is, is this a germaphobe thing? <laughs> is this a megalomaniacal thing? I, I don't quite get it. It was really a bizarre moment. Yeah, the look of disgust was pretty intense, uh, to say the least. I think he clearly is a germaphobe. Uh, there's been countless reports about how he didn't like to, he doesn't like to really shake hands on the campaign trail and other things. But it, it, it was a pretty just amazing situation, particularly because in the beginning you didn't know, was it a, a, an ABC staffer? Who was, who was the one who was coughing that had kind of caught his ire? And it was clearly Mick Mulvaney, uh, his acting chief of staff. So it, it was one of these many kind of illuminating moments that you get in the Trump White House. But I also like the, cam, the change in the camera shot also pretty illuminating how much he still mm. sees this as his Hollywood moment. Tim, mm. last word on this? I was just going to say, when you take the attention off the president, the president gets angry. And that's what was happening. Somebody else was getting attention and he didn't like it.